What's going on there folks? Good evening, Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this uh, Monday, start of the work week, right? I guess one day down, four more to go. July 26, 2021, 7.20 p.m. West Coast time, California, um, where we got a 2.5 earthquake as the latest quake on the globe. Pretty active, uh, generally speaking, along the Pacific Plate especially over here towards the western northwestern part of the pacific plate uh, where they've seen a little bit of heightened earthquake activity just off the coast of russia there all along the pacific plate area uh, stretching down to the uh, hiroshima area uh, right around japan uh, southern part of japan as well japan japan trench seen a little bit of uptick and some deeper movement here so kind of watching this area it's been awfully quiet uh, at the surface recently and uh, quite a bit of buildup of pressure in this region generally speaking over the past few months uh, and that's I'm sure that's going to change eventually with all the deep movement uh, a little bit further south down into the Indonesia area seeing a pretty good size 6.2 earthquake way earlier uh, right around uh, yeah, not too familiar with this area but definitely uh, uh, seismically speaking this is a, a, a pretty good hot spot when it comes to uh, earthquakes and, and much larger than the 6.2 uh, that struck. Uh, this was at about 10 kilometers below surface. Looks like there was a, uh, a little four quake, uh, main shaker, and then a, a little aftershock there with 4.8, all roughly, uh, well, 10, 18, five kilometers, a little bit of difference there. So uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of movement taking place down there in Indonesia. The Fiji area still seen, man, check this out. Look at this, good Lord. 618 kilometers for, woo, for that 4.5. Oh man, it's not a major earthquake, but man, there's something going on down there. It's always, I mean, it's, it's deep. I'm gonna have to look up one of these days what the deepest earthquake is. I think it's 670 or 680, somewhere around there. But, uh, you know, it's not too often we see 618. It just doesn't happen all the time. We see a lot of 500s in the KM range, uh, and that's what we've been seeing seeing over the past couple of weeks here in this region. But uh, looking at the scale today, quite a bit of deep movement into the uh, uh, Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench area. New Zealand looking pretty quiet down here for the most part, according to the USGS uh, with a 4.0 threshold. Also, uh, let's see over here towards the uh, west, a little bit of movement in uh, uh, to Jackistan area, 4.3, some deep movement up there as well. A little bit of activity stretching over to Greece, but uh, overall pretty quiet, generally quiet uh, speaking terms there uh, in that region. Uh, down here in the uh, Middle America Trench, some deeper movement as well, 4.6, striking just off the coast at 39 kilometers. And some movement down here near uh, Panama, 4.6. South America, uh, I think they're getting in on some of the deep action as well. Inland, down dip downstream of the Peru-Chile Trench. A pair of earthquakes, pretty deep. 242 kilometers for the 4.3 and 181 uh, for the 4.2. A little bit of surface quaking taking place up here, uh, or down here, I should say, near Santiago, uh, Chile area. Uh, 31 kilometers for a 4.9 kind of up there around the uh, subduction zone of that region North America area um, as far as 2.5 goes 2.5 and above not a whole lot going on right you can see these uh, couple quakes here indicating the 2.5 threshold we'll swing up the all magnitudes and uh, get a better a view of what's going on here we've seen some movement around the Garlock fault structure not on, uh, not specifically on it maybe well maybe that one is uh, but we're seeing kind of a line of activity here stretching across it. Uh, 3.2 was, it looks kind of like the main quake down there around the Tehachapi area, shaking things up out in the uh, Mojave, Mojave Desert uh, with this line of earthquake activity. Not for sure if these have been reviewed or not. Let's go ahead and check this out. Automatic, so very possible that these earthquakes here were triggered uh, falsely by this uh, 3.2 so keep an eye on that see if they uh, disappear or not uh, Southern California region San Jacinto fault area pretty active with some microquakes and on the North American plate side 
just off the San Andreas Fault, the southern end here, getting a, a cluster of quakes out here. Uh, nothing major, but some deeper movement. Uh, there's some deeper movement over here on the west, but um, quite a few microquakes taking place here in this general area. A little swarm of activity here and, and down there. And uh, also over here, it looks like, like uh, near the Cottonwood Basin area. Don't see any specifically named faults out there, but uh, nonetheless, there's some earthquake activity ramping up. Uh, what else we got here? Northern California. Of course, the Antelope Valley area still seeing some uh, aftershock activity. Some movement up here around the, uh, what do we got here? Mineral? Close to Mineral. I was just up there. Been up there a couple times over the last uh, week or so. 1.3 reviewed. That one has been reviewed, so that one's uh, legit. A little bit of movement up here around Redding as well. Some activity in the coastal ranges. Cascadia and the Oregon coastline looking pretty quiet. Movement up through the Cascades, very minimal. Uh, we're not seeing a whole lot of activity at all in that region. Uh, into the uh, Idaho region. A little bit of movement around the Sawtooth Fault area and also into the Yellowstone area of Wyoming. We'll check out the Yellowstone seismographs here, refresh this, show you guys the uh, latest map. You can see the uh, general earthquake activity over here around the northwest corner of the park once again. Um, but overall, not a whole lot, folks. I mean, just a handful. You can see that activity. Each each and every one of these little spikes there indicating a uh, an earthquake. Somewhere over here is the... Uh, those kind of look like uh, distant, larger quakes. But definitely some uh, some swarming going on there at Yellowstone National Park, but nothing significant at the moment. And uh, if you look at uh, Yellowstone uh, Lake area, Lake Butte area, looking pretty quiet. Some interference here on the Lake Butte and Little West Thumb seismograph. Uh, just not for sure what's going on there, but it's out of it's way it's whacked out. <laughs> it doesn't look good. Uh, but no earthquake activity, just some type of adjustment, it looks like, or some type of uh, uh, malfunction, so to speak. But that also showed up on Little West Thumb. If this was uh, any type of significant uh, movement in the ground or underneath the ground, we'd see this uh, showing up significantly on all these other stations. But it's only these two select stations, and they look identical, which tells me that it's network interference uh, being picked up there. Uh, what else we got here, folks? I was checking out some, uh, let's go over here to the, uh, uh let's see here, PNSN network. I was checking out some of the seismograph stations up in, uh, up in Washington and Oregon. The PNSN.org network has, uh, quite a bit of a selection of seismographs. Um, you can pretty much view all the, uh, data from the stations, you know, if they're not reporting earthquakes up here. Uh, and you go to a specific seismograph station and, and there's no earthquakes that you can tell, then, uh, then the USGS, I guess, is doing their job because there's no earth earthquakes to report. Um, so uh, I'd like to look at the general activity over the last um, couple days or so, see if they've been accurately reporting stuff. And so far it looks pretty good, at least as far as the stations that I've looked at. Um, you can look at all sorts of regions through the PNSN network. Um, quite a bit of, quite a bit of act, uh, station information to check out up there and you can also do the same thing at the uh, uh, in California California has got uh, quite a list of this is just just a small amount of seismograph stations like you can check out the uh, oh let's see here we'll go to over here along the coastline and look at uh, information this here is over the last 24 hours of uh, data coming into this seismograph station uh, looks like Kahato Peak KCPB HHZ station. Uh, this specific earthquake is going to be that. Uh, well, this is the last 24 hours. Uh, I'm pretty certain that is that. Let's see here. That's got to be the 2.6 earthquake right there. 0822 UTC time. Uh, so we go over here 08, 0815, 0822. 
So there is that earthquake there that was reported from the USGS. And you can go back uh, the day before and see uh, uh, further activity. I think that was that 3. Point, I think there was a 3.4 uh, to the west of me over in, in the coast range there near Alder Springs uh, that, that got picked up as well. So overall looking at these seismographs, very quiet. They're amplified pretty, pretty nicely. So you can see if there's any type of swarming, any type of uh, even super microquake earthquake activity. It's just not showing up because uh, you can see how well defined it'll pick up uh, uh, these other earthquakes, you know, in, in the uh, two range. Picks them up pretty nicely. Uh, let's see, what do we got here for trimmer map? Um, doo -doo -doo, look at this, a different, uh, different type of setup tonight, or at least over the last 24 hours. Got about 20 epicenters around the Seattle area, right underneath the Seattle fault system here. Seattle Fault kind of runs uh, left to right. You can actually see it on this map here. Let me show you guys up here around Seattle, Washington. Seattle Fault. This area very capable of producing uh, upper six, I believe. That's what I remember, around 6.9 or so. Pretty significant uh, magnitude. Uh, right underneath the city of Seattle would not be good. Um, so that's kind of where all that deeper movement is taking place underneath there. Uh, down dip downstream the uh, Cascadia uh, Let's see here only a handful of uh, trimmer being reported But definitely uh, a lot different from what we've seen over the past couple weeks here with movement mostly confined uh, Into Northern California and parts of Oregon down here, but uh, Today nothing nothing to list nothing to see down here. Uh, what else we got here folks solar weather what's going on out here in the solar weather department solar ham has been solarham.net is the uh, uh, station I normally use or at least a website I normally use uh, for some solar data but they're, they're kind of uh, having some network issues I think uh, pretty slow I'm trying to slow down my scrolling I seen your comment I seen a, uh, a viewers comment about going too fast you know up and down here <laughs> I apologize for that. I, I'm just a fast reader, a fast observer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I definitely got to slow it down a little bit. Um, I think my sensitivity here on the mouse or, uh, is a little amplified. Um, so anyway, uh, looking pretty quiet. There's a couple sunspots. You know, some of them have uh, actually disappeared off of the, uh, the disk of the sun. A couple days ago, there was about six sunspots here facing the Earth's side. Now we only got about two. Uh, most of these are pretty stable, pose little threat for any type of solar flares. Um, so we're not really expecting much far and far as far as uh, geomagnetic storming goes. In fact, uh, according to spaceweather.com, look at those chances. M flares, well, one percent, pretty low, folks. Uh, any asteroids coming to us? It doesn't look like, at least far as uh, far as they're letting us know, not a whole lot. I mean, this stuff here is uh, its kind of interesting to watch and look at um, when it comes to uh, near-Earth objects. I don't see anything uh, listed, at least on this map, on this chart, as far as uh, anything to worry about. Uh, 2,202 potentially hazardous asteroids. I'm sure that's only a, a fraction of what uh, we know about. So, yeah, just, uh, I'd like to see if I can pull up the Solar Hand website here. It's just they've been having some issues and just I can't access the server for some reason. It just keeps there and keeps on buffering and I just can't access it. Alrighty, I'm surprised we, it's kind of a major delay there. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see here. What do these guys have to say? Not a whole lot. Definitely not a whole lot. Pretty uh, significantly quiet is the word. So, all right, folks. Um, I'm going to jump off here. Still kind of feeling the after effects of breathing in all that smoke yesterday. But uh, I'll recover. I will survive. And uh, we got a whole bunch of... Uh, Monsoonal moisture coming in from the south, creating uh, some thunderstorms up in the mountains. 
Um, getting a little bit of rainfall as well. That's good, right? We need the rain here in California, but uh, with any thunderstorms here, you know, there's always that, that lightning cloud, the ground lightning uh, that can spark up new fires, even with some rain falling down. Uh, and that's, uh, that's not what we need here in California, trust me. We got some wind picking up too out of the south. So if anything, it's gonna fire up the, uh, the Dixie fire a little bit more and the other California fires and blow them northward. So hopefully we get hopefully we get a whole lot of rain and uh, less lightning. As much as I love lightning and thunder, it just uh, I don't want to see anything else catch fire out here. It's just not good. Not going to be nothing left here in California. All right, folks, have a good night. Uh, I did reset the stream earlier today. Everything's good. Uh, that was a self reset. And uh, moving forward, we should be good to go. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe. I'm going to go get dinner started on the barbecue. And uh, I'm just going to kick back, relax a little bit, enjoy the evening. Have a good night, everyone. Peace out.